Mine is a very rare and extreme opinion, but there's little to nothing this world can offer me. What others hold as valuable to me is worthless. My citizenship is not here. All my dreams and hopes are in the Father's kingdom. So let me ask you a question regarding God's kingdom. Are you planting seeds for the harvest? while doing God's will and storing up treasures in heaven? Or are you focused on fool's gold, sentimental memories, and material wealth motivated by short-term, paper-thin aspirations? With no elevation above earthly endeavors, are your goals and ambitions only those validated by earthly status quo? A life adorned with momentary trinkets of eternal worthless memorabilia, all which will turn to dust along with your faded memory of them upon judgment day. Are you there or not there? If you're still with me, Shalom. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. Remember Lot's wife? While fleeing a wicked city with her husband, she turned around and looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. Are we in the body looking behind? Are our goals and dreams rooted in the world or are we looking forward to the kingdom? Ask yourself, are you eagerly awaiting the arrival of our king or secretly hoping he takes his good time because truthfully you're not ready to leave this fallen world. Luke 17 33 Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life will preserve it. If you had just one minute to say something to someone that might help change their life, what would you tell them? To the unbeliever living in the world, I might say, I know it's fun now, and you think when the joy fades, you'll just find another way to live your best life. But like that night out at your favorite club, or that trip overseas you couldn't wait to go on, it's all going to end eventually. Like your life without the Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. In Acts 4.12, it explains what I might tell them about Jesus. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And to the believers who are looking to live as well as possible while they tiptoe through life on cruise control until the rapture, or to those who are waiting for the false prophetic transfer of wealth all the wolves are telling people about, while motivational speakers encourage you with that bucket list of goals and desires in the world, the only goals in this world that matter to our Father are the ones that bring him glory and bring people to the gospel. In 1 Timothy 4.1, it explains that some will depart from the faith. And I know most believe once saved, always saved. That in John 10.29, it says, No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. But it also says in Hebrews 6, 4-6, and please listen carefully because most pastors won't teach this verse. It says, It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they should fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, 
seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God of flesh, and put him to an open shame. The implication of this word fall away suggests that it's far greater than a Christian who has backslidden or stumbled. Just like the seven churches in Revelation, it seems clear that it is possible to lose your inheritance. While pastors will say, that person was never saved to begin with, but that's not what this verse is saying or the letters to the church. It's talking about the believers. So tell me, somebody please tell me how you could read this verse while being in denial of many truths of this world while chasing goals and desires of this world and still feel all is well with their soul. This is not condemnation. It's just something to think about. God bless you all.